Okay, this is Luna, and this is actually take two of this video. Um, last one was 14 minutes, so this one we want to make a little bit more consolidated. Now, we've just finished the routine I'm about to describe to you. Uh, and you can see she's not fully comfortable, but she is on the uh, babysitter's lap. Now, uh, basically what we want to do is when we, anything a dog, we're, a dog is doing when we pet it is what we're amplifying and reinforcing. The guardians, a lot of times when she's been nervous or anxious, have been petting her to try to console her, which is a very common human behavior, but it will backfire when you do it with the dog because it's going to make the dog a little bit more anxious, nervous, or whatever they're feeling at the time. This also includes excited. So basically, uh, the guardians are going to stop doing that. The, the, uh, the ba uh, nanny uh, really went out of her way to try to earn the dog's trust by doing a lot of the same things, petting, touching, look, talking nicely, uh, smiles, and all that fun stuff, which we like. But to a dog that's fearful of us is going to amplify and, and backfire and go the other direction. So what I'd like to, uh, the, uh, to go through here is I'm just going to describe it because we tried to film it and, and she was just too worked up. If a dog won't sit or take a treat, it's its way of saying I'm too overwhelmed. I can't process those things. We don't want to force it. But those are good litmus tests. So basically when, the, uh, when the, uh, the nanny comes, I'd like the nanny to text ahead of time. And so the guardians know they're going to put her on a leash. Then we're gonna go to the door with the dog on the leash. We're gonna hand the nanny about six or seven little of these treat pieces. The nanny's gonna come in and walk around the couch and then come and sit here. And she's gonna drop the treats the same way I showed you before, kind of dropping, uh, lowering, but dropping the last six inches or so, about every two steps. And then, uh, actually, uh, you're not gonna give her the leash. You're gonna just give her the treats. She's gonna drop this and then come and sit here. You're gonna lead Luna to those treats. If she, and you're gonna tap a couple times, make sure she's aware of them. If she's not interested in them, we're not gonna force or over encourage. We're just gonna bring her over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have her pick up her foot. We're gonna put the leash underneath her foot so that Luna is about a foot and a half to two feet away from her. While she's doing this, she's not looking at the dog. She's not interacting with the dog, trying to give it pets or attention or treats or anything. All I want to do is wait for the dog to sit down. As soon as the dog, and we're not telling the dog to sit, she doesn't know how to sit on command, another issue she's got, but she will know that soon. Uh, but we're not gonna tell her to do anything. We want her to figure out our, as soon as she sits down, that's a way of saying I'm comfortable enough to sit close proximity to you. So it may take a little bit of time. So you might wanna, if we could arrange to have uh, the nanny come by at a day when she's not gonna work, uh, that would be beneficial so she can spend a little bit of time, it's off kilter and you're not worried about what you know, need to do. Um, I believe she lives close by. So we want to, uh, as soon as the dog sits down, the nanny is going to uh, then uh, take the leash and we're going to put the martingale around it. You didn't actually put it around. It needs to be around the chest in front of the, you put it basically around her neck an extra time. Um, I'll show you off camera. So basically then she's going to take the dog out walking and she prefers to walk on the left. So I'd suggest we just switch to the left side. Um, and we're doing this when she's walking. This is kind of, this is more of a dog psychology session. Normally I want the dog to be very structured. In her case, that would help, but I want a really positive association with uh, the nanny. So when the nanny's letting her walk, if she wants to go this way, as long as it's safe to do so and it's not going back, the nanny's going to pretty much, if she stops to sniff, we're going to stop and let her sniff. So we want her to enjoy the walk. And I would go a little bit further, probably twice as long as we went on this last walk. And then she's going to turn around and come back. And once we come back, we're going to come and sit down. This position I wouldn't want to do until maybe the second until the second week, unless you really feel comfortable, and then you could do it a little bit sooner if you want. But we want to go at the dog's pace, not at our arbitrary pace, and I'm not going to be here. So just if the dog feels nice and comfortable, it's taking treats. When it starts taking the treats on the, off the floor, that would probably be a good time where you can actually transition to that. So when she comes over, we're going to have her hold, uh, pick up her leg, uh, her foot. We're going to take the leash. We're going to put it underneath, and you're going to step on it firmly to prevent the dog from running away. Now she's going to try to scooch away. We're not going to say anything. We're not try, going to console her. And when she settles down, I would like the, uh, the the nanny to drop a treat or two. And again, that's another test. If she takes the treat, that's, she feels comfortable. Um, if she, as soon as she sits down, the nanny's going to let, let her foot off of the leash, and we want to try to do it when when she sits. When she sits down, if you can, try, take the foot that's on the leash and slide it towards her a little bit to take the tension off, ideally first, unless she continually moves away and, and uses that. But the idea is once she sits down, she's saying, I'm somewhat, I'm a little bit more comfortable at least. And as soon as she does that, she gets freedom. And then she's going to walk away dragging the leash. Now, it's dangerous to drag the leash unsupervised, so make sure she's supervised. we got three adults in the house. It shouldn't be a problem. And then basically you can take the leash off a couple minutes later. So, uh, and then at the end of the nanny's visit, I'd like the nanny to, again, repeat this process, except for the, without the door thing. So we're gonna, the nanny's gonna sit here, the guardian's gonna put her on a leash, put her under her foot, or wait for the dog to sit. As soon as the dog sits, you will put, or, or uh, your uh, other guardian, will put the martingale around the, uh, around the chest, like I'll show you off the camera. Then you're gonna take her for another walk as well. Um, now, one thing I forgot is I'd like the guardian to get bully 
bites. I, this is from the Natural Dog Company, not just Natural Dog Company, their comp competitor. Uh, but it's a, we want to get bully bites and make sure they're odor free. Otherwise, you will not be happy. Um, and when when uh, you uh, when the nanny comes in, actually at the beginning, once the dog sits after uh, after the walk, then you're just going to put the bully stick down and then just walk away, and try to not step over the dog. Walk this way or whichever way you have to, and then we're just going to leave it there. Don't entice her to get it. She might not even get it until after you leave. That's okay. Eventually, she'll start chewing on it faster and faster. We just want to create as many positive associations with the nanny as we possibly can. One other thing I'd like the nanny to do is to grab a handful of food and rub it over her hands into a Ziploc bag. Now again, like I said in the last video, I don't want you to start using that food until after you've already transitioned her from a free feeding situation to a regular feeding situation because we don't want to add extra baggage to that. Once she's eating, when you give her food, then we want to start using the nanny's food. So we're going to put the nanny's scent on something that the dog likes and create another positive association. This is gonna sound a little bit weird, but next time you shower, if you can get a little hand towel, wipe yourself off it before you get into the shower. And then uh, put it in a Ziploc bag, bring it here. Make it, it's not, you know, just we want your scent on it, that's all. Um, and then what I want you to do is I want you to lay that towel down and I want you to drop one of these treats on it and let her come and get it. Every time she does that, she's gonna lick it up, she's gonna get a little bit of her scent on it. And again, creating another more positive association. So these are just little tricks that we can help the dog start feeling, every time I smell her, something good happens. And then the more that that happens, then, she, then your scent becomes a calming presence and a positive association. And through all the rest of these things, dogs get over things by walking, so walking together will help. Uh, you know, helping her practice being here without trying to touch. So again, when you have her under, under your foot, we're not gonna pet or interact or look at her or nothing, actually. And the rest of the time that you're here, ignore her completely unless you need to let her out. It'd be nice, actually, um, if she fed, well, eventually it'd be nice once you transition food if she's actually the one that feeds her. So that way, again, you're the provider of food, but first do it until she's eating with her scent on it first before you make that transition. Uh, but then she's the provider of nourishment, which is again another positive association. But make sure when you, every time you feed her, she gets you get a chip or a crack or something. You eat five or more bites first, then you give the dog permission to eat. And if the dog walks away from the bowl, you pick up the bowl, you dump the food back in the bag, and you put the empty bowl back down. You don't encourage her to eat. That's okay. That's all right. Now we can't let her flight. Is that, that was just, don't take my food away. <laughs> <How dare you? laughs> but we can't let her flight. This is why when, when we, we don't let her scramble through a door. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're going through doors, um, the human should go through the door first and the dog after. But if we let the dog peel out and run away and then she achieves what she wants, then that's going to reward and encourage that same behavior again. Mm -hmm. So if this sort of thing happens, you shouldn't pick her up because that would be tra uh, traumatic. Just ask one of the guardians to say, oh, she jumped down. You come over, you put her back up, you do the leash, and then you walk away. And we want, and the walk will help her develop a little bit of her own relationship with the dog, which she's got one, but we want to create a more of a positive one. Mm -hmm. So these are some trips, uh, yeah, if I can speak properly, these are some tips and tricks that you can use to help a dog start to develop a positive association with someone that they are fearful or anxious around.